Where are my fingers? How's it going, everybody? Mike here from Kapowcast, back with a NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figure review. Oh boy, we're taking a look at the Bebop and Rocksteady figures today. As you can see, they're not here quite yet. I gotta grab them. Um, every once in a while, there's cases where I cannot wait to open the figures until the review, and this this was one of those cases. But anyways, uh, the figures would be displayed clearly here in the window box, as you can see. Then you got some awkward promotional art of the two characters. I do not like that at all. It's very weird, but that is the licensing art that they have to use. So it is what it is. On the side, you got a good image of Bebop there. On the other side, you got Rocksteady. On the back, you got another image of both figures, along with the other figures in the wave. And you have a little read up there. If you want to pause and read that, feel free. So without further ado, let's get these figures out here. Now, before we get to the figures, we do have accessories to talk about, as always. And each character does come with two of this small pistol-like gun. Done very nicely in a nice color. I got a little... Eh. But um, same ones that came with the foot soldiers. And uh, this gun here. So nothing new. Two of each. Perfect. I mean, they use the same guns in the show all the time. So no problems there. The guns are fine. Uh, my main problem is uh, the hands. So we do get a, an assortment of hands. Each character does come with a pair of the actual fisted hands. And they are the exact same sculpts, it looks like. Exact same sculpts, just different paint. So that's nice. Uh, and each character has these open, more open, like, grabby hands. Dog hair there, sorry about that. Dog shed. Deal with it. Um, so that's that's all right. And we do have, let's see, trigger hands. which I did just have on the figures recently and took off for the review. Another pair of grippy hands. And another pair of grip holding hands. Well, not really paired because you get one each, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, but one other thing you do get also is this little communicator, which is really cool because we have an image of Shredder there, the actual figure. So that's super great, great detail, great line work, as always, from NECA. Super awesome. Now, the one issue is I noticed when I was swapping hands off, um, I noticed some paint flaking, and it wasn't just a little bit, it was a lot of bit. So if I move the camera down here, look at that. That all, and that's not even all of it, that all flaked off just from changing the hands. So be kind of weary of that. Let me move the camera back up. Um, and also, I think one of my rock steady hands, this one here, you can already see there is, is some paint chipping inside the hand as well. So that's kind of a bummer. And on my Rocksteady, or uh, I'm sorry, that was Rocksteady. On my Bebop one, uh, you can see some paint chipping underneath there, which that's kind of not cool. I know a lot of paint is coming off of the peg, because that happened with the one with the quarter scale um, movie turtles. And it wasn't a big deal because the paint flaked off the peg, but the plastic was in that color anyway, so it was just kind of, it was kind of redundant. And it looks like it's kind of the case here, but like I said, you can also see it kind of flaking there, and then on the inside of Roxy's hand here, you can kind of see that. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, doesn't help when I drop him either. But I don't plan on getting super crazy and changing out hands all the time. Um, it'll probably just be mostly for this review, and then I'll get them posed up, and that will probably be that. And the guns, I think, also don't help because it is a very very snug fit and this isn't a soft plastic like a marvel legends this is a very um very hard plastic uh so you really got to stretch it heat it up it still might not even work but it's, it's still a very like tight fit um so i don't plan on swapping that stuff out very often but enough about that let's take a look at the actual figures so first up let's take a look at mr bebop here and he is looking fantastic my word i mean what what can i say i feel like I can't really say exactly how good he looks. Um, just look at all the paintwork. Everything on here is painted. Everything is painted. I don't believe anything is done or like molded in that type of plastic. It looks like everything is painted and painted well. It looks very clean. I don't have any real complaints when it comes to the paint there. Uh, and big surprise here. The jaw opens. You even got some great paintwork in there. 
This little necklace here is kind of free floating. You also got a chain on the waist, chain on the wrist. It's just so good. NECA is the undisputed king of Ninja Turtle collectible figures, and I don't think anybody dare dispute that or would even attempt to. And you got like the darker shading here on the back, this, the fur and his jacket. Just looks so good. And yes, his, his legs are a little bowed. Um, they kind of look like they're, they go out a little weird. Um, unfortunately, not much I can really do about that. Uh, this is a rather stiff plastic, and if you want to get him in that more crouch position that uh, Bebop and Roxanne are known for, it's not really going to work too well. You're going to have to try to shift weight a little bit to try to get it, uh, because these figures are very top-heavy. Um, but with some finagling, you may be able to get him to go. Uh, that's not too bad. and looks a little better. But um, he doesn't have much movement here on the ankles, but... While we're at it, let's just go ahead and go over his articulation. His head can kind of go side to side, but it's, uh, since it's kind of hunched over, it kind of does a weird sideways up motion. Uh, as I said, his jaw is articulated. His arms can go up and back, but you're not going to get much movement to the shoulder pads. You don't want to mess those up. His arms do come out. He does have double jointed elbows. Those work very nicely. He has a swivel on the wrist along with a hinge. If you can kind of get it to go, it's a little stiff. Uh, as is the way with NECA figures. He has a diaphragm cut here, so you can get a little bit of movement out of there. Not too much, but it's enough to get you going. His legs can go out roughly about that far, so he's not really quite Van Damming it too much. Back together. Uh, his legs can go up that far. Can't really go back much. Um, he does have double-jointed knees, if you can get him to go. And stiff NECA joints, strike again. He has a kind of boot cut, but it's up here like around the ankle. So he has that there, uh, and not, like I said, not much movement here in the feats. But, but, with these guys, you're not really, for me, I'm not really paying for these, or getting these, expecting the world's greatest articulation. Um, I'm honestly getting these more so for uh, the appearance, the aesthetic of them. That's what, that's what everyone's getting these for. I think that's what is attracting everybody to these figures. These are eye-catching figures on a shelf, and Rocksteady is no different, so let's take a look at him. One thing real quick I forgot to mention with Bebop is his glasses also can get flipped up, and that is haunting. That is as is, is frightening as one could imagine. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the same on every figure, because every review I've seen, it's the same where this pupil's bigger than this one. Not sure if it's show accurate or not, but either way, he's going to be displayed like this, and that looks fantastic. And here's Rocksteady also looking fantastic. He stands really easy. Uh, you can also get him in that kind of more hunched over pose um, that he's known for in the show. Just oh, so fantastic. And once again, uh, same thing with, you know, Bebop here. They have that awesome, like, two-tone paint where you got the shading on the back here and the light on the front that just really gives them that animated feel along with all the black line work. Just, oh, it's so fantastic. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, what more can you say? Uh, there's two parts on this guy I'm a little worried about, and one is this part here, which is kind of a free-floating part. If you can kind of see that. Kind of worry about that falling off, and the sword here. The sword here is very peculiarly placed. It's just kind of hanging there. It looks like a little dab of glue or something. No big deal if it falls off, because you can just, you know, glue it back, but that's a little, little, little weird. Um, I maybe would have secured that a little bit better. So it's, you know, you don't have to worry about it falling off. But you got the shell here that's also floating, the grenade. Just, oh, it's so good. It makes me so happy. Oh, I want to cry. One thing I forgot to mention, too, um, with Bebop, uh, and we'll get to Rock City, too, here. Uh, his, his jaw also moves. You can get some jaw movement there. Oh, God bless it. What did we do to deserve this? So, yes, Rock City's jaw also opens, and it's very nice. And the one thing that kind of bums me out, but it's not really a big deal, because, I mean, you're never going to see the figure, is I do have some overspray of pink paint in here from the mouth. I'm not sure if that's on everyone's, but, I mean, once you have his mouth open a bit, you really don't see it. And not to mention, face forward, you don't really notice it or see it at all. But I love that they threw in that jaw articulation. It wasn't necessary. They could have just had, you know, sculpted with them open or closed, one or the other. But you get a real choice of options here with that, and it's perfect. But yeah, Bebop, or Rocksteady, I'm going to do that so many more times. Looks, once again, fantastic. I've heard some people say they kind of wish he had the helmet. And in a sense, I agree. Just because it was, you know, his first appearance he had that on. 
But he also looked a little bit different in his first appearance. I believe he had the brown and black camouflage pants as well, along with the helmet. But maybe they'll do some kind of re-release uh, later down the road where he has the camo and the, the helmet on. Or what I would love for them to do, and I don't know if they could do this, because I know uh, Super 7 is already doing some more like updated versions of like the old Playmates figures, where it looks like the Playmates figures, but it's a more like... Uh, I don't want to say show accurate, but a more like like a beefed up version. But if they took these and did them in like the paint schemes of the old Playmate toys, kind of like they do with like the Kenner uh, Predator and Alien stuff and Terminator stuff, that would be fantastic. I would I would buy those if they did all four turtles in like their different colors that they were in the oh oh I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to stop. Anywho, uh, Rock Steady here. He has kind of the same articulation where his arms can go out. He does have a bit of a bicep swivel, which I think I missed on Bebop, but it's kind of there. And, you know, you get the bend, you get a swivel and hinge on the ankle or wrists, body parts. His legs can go about that far, a lot better than uh, Bebop's. His legs can go up that far, they can't really go back too much. He does have a double bend on the knee, swivel on the boot. And he does have a pretty decent ankle pivot and hinge, not too bad. So you're definitely gonna, I think you're gonna, if you're gonna get more poses out of uh, Rock City here than you will Bebop, just because there's something weird with his legs still. There's something weird with Bebop's legs that I'm not really, you know, too sure on. But once again, the are these are more of an aesthetic purchase. You know, they're a, something to look good, not so much articulation is second when it comes to stuff like this, like. I'm going to forgive so much on articulation for these because it's for the sacrifice of the paint and the sculpt. So I'm okay with it. These are fantastic. Let's do some comparison. Here they are next to Crane and the boss. That's what they always said, boss, uh, Shredder. Um, I'm like of two minds on the size. Like, I really like how big and chunky these guys are. They're very hefty. They're very sturdy feeling. At the same time, Shredder was a bit taller than them in the show. So, you know, I guess it kind of works. Like, looking at him with Bebop there. But, you know, that's Bebop hunched over. Even hunched over, you could tell. They were not, you know, Shredder, I think, was more about, like, right here with them. If I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. But regardless, I think these all look fantastic together. And I can't wait to roll out more villains. Get Leatherhead, uh, Slash, General Trag, the Triceraton, all that stuff. Oh, my God, NECA, you're going to make me broke in 2020. Here they are next to a couple of my foot soldiers. Once again, great size in comparison. Looking fantastic. Um, I have four more foot soldiers on the way. I already have 11. Yes, that is an odd number because I didn't know that they were going to be releasing these in army building packs X amount of months ago. So I started buying them loose off eBay when they did the target release last year and build my own army. But now they have these two packs, which makes it even easier. And my foot clan is looking great. And here they are with the turtles. I could fit them in as best I could, but as you can see, there's once again a fantastic size difference between them. They should be bigger than the turtles. They are bigger than the turtles. And this just makes me so happy. Uh, I don't even know what to say. These look fantastic together. I can't wait. Like I said, I can't wait for more. And we're also going to be getting a Casey Jones, an April O'Neil, uh, Roadkill, or was it Road Rash Rodney? I can't remember if it was Roadkill Rodney or Road Rash Rodney. But the little robots that, you know, had the tentacles and Oh, just the possibilities of this line are endless, and NECA is just sitting on a gold line. I don't see them stopping these anytime soon, because the demand for these is insane. Oh, love them. Absolutely love these figures. What is not to love about them? Great paint. Articulation? Not terrible. Accessories? Check. They're fantastic. I cannot stress enough how much I love these. If you see them out in the wild... Do not him and haw and, and say, yeah, I'll think about it, or maybe, you know, next time. There probably won't be a next time if you find him in the wild. These guys are so hot right now. Um, they are probably the hottest collectible figure out on the shelves as we speak. I am very confident to say that, so do not sleep on them. If you see them, get them right away. You won't regret it. If you like this video and you want to see more, go ahead, click the like button, click subscribe, and the bell notification to get notified every time you post content on this great YouTube channel. Until next time, cowbunga, and take care.